From San Francisco, I'm Moira Gunn, and this is Tech Nation. Why do people go into engineering? You know, um, I didn't think I was ever going to go into engineering. I came from a family of history and English majors. I mean, that was kind of like, you got to be kidding. And yet, we all knew I was great at math. I love math. Saturday mornings, I would just to be doing math. I thought it was fun. Actually, my friends have a big joke. It's like, oh, it's Moira. Let's do math, you know, as opposed to let's go to the movies or let's have, oh, let's do math. I love math. I get endorphins from math. I guess I would say college when it really started to kick in. Between my freshman and sophomore year, I was a data input clerk. In those days, we didn't have the screens that you could just type on. We had continuous paper through what looked like an electric typewriter, like an IBM's electric typewriter. And they would have notebooks, lab notebooks, and then you would type and this kind of thing. I just really loved the computer and I loved the data and so I went back in and I said I'd like to, as a sophomore, I'd like to become a computer science major and at that point I didn't know what else I wanted to do in computer science. So the design group in mechanical engineering found out about me and he sent one of his graduate students over to me and said, you know, we have a big graduate group over here in computer-aided design. Would you consider coming over? You're really only several courses short of an engineering degree. And I guess I think you can do it better than the guys in my lab, so I think you need to come over. And that's when I ultimately, where I ultimately got my PhD. So all of these people kept telling me, oh my gosh, there's a woman in the thing. And how, what is it like being the only woman in these meetings? And finally I said, why are you asking me? I have never been in a meeting without a woman in it. You gotta ask them to see is it different. And you know, it really wasn't any different. We had all this work to do and you had to be on time and under budget and come up with a brilliant idea every so often. So it's not that different. You know, we got the same assignments and then we just get down to work. I had left NASA and had become a consultant, which means I did all kinds of different things. And Atari computers have these new educational software, they teach science, they teach technology, they teach all this stuff. And uh, so they have a program put together where they cut out proof of purchase seals from post serial boxes in exchange for these uh, Atari computers and software. And we send spokespeople in, would you consider doing it? And I said, well, why not? And they said, you know, you're really good at this. And I go, how hard can it be? Buy cereal, come on. You know, so um, they really liked what I was doing. So that's how I got into it. Just unbeknownst to me that I was good at that. And the nerd in the radio station when I was an undergraduate had become the general manager. And uh, he said, yeah, well, just, you can start a show, sure. And so we started there. And it's funny how things grow. Um, uh, I started interviewing people. I would get astrophysicists and neuroscientists. And, Dr. Gunn, would you consider interviewing Linus Pauling? And I went, bingo, we got it. Something has happened here. Coming up on Tech Nation, we'll take a look at Larry Page and Sergey Brin. They're co-founders of Google. Walter Isaacson is with us to talk about his latest book, Salman Khan, the founder of Khan Academy, Ed Catmull, the president of Pixar Animation, Peter Diamandis, the founder of the XPRIZE Foundation. It became what it is today, which is a lot bigger than I ever thought it was going to be. It's really gratifying, and I'm very fortunate. Got to talk to a lot of people, and uh, hopefully we'll talk to a whole lot more people from here. I do encounter uh, Purdue grads every so often, and they frequently identify themselves to me. <laughs> Go Boilers! It's a big Purdue family, and very infrequently are you going to be someplace and you don't find a Purdue connection. It's fun to come back and to see these students, and they're so wonderful. They're different kind of students than we were. You don't have to say, oh, I have to go and stand in line at the computing center and do punch cards and wait 20 minutes for it to come out. It's like all right there, wherever you want to be. They all have, you know, smartphones. And so they're doing tremendous work. They're more organized in a real sense. They can, they can organize themselves in a real sense. This is a new generation and a digital generation that is, um, it's going to be fun to see what they're capable of. It's going to be really great.